Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Iris Vision Inspire, a new wearable electronic magnifier from Iris Vision. But is it any good? Well, let's take a look. All right, so here we have the Iris Vision Inspire. This is a new wearable uh, with a number of cool features and a very cool design. First of all, what do we get in the box when we get an Iris Vision Inspire? Well, we get a very nice carry case here that we can put our device in and all of our accessories. We get this rather nice charging dock, which is a wireless charging dock. And obviously we get the headset itself. Now the headset is one of the big uh, changes uh, with this new Iris Vision design. Uh, design device. It's a very nice design um, and it looks a bit more like a pair of sunglasses than some other wearables and it is tethered to a smartphone that does the image processing and so to, sm uh, to charge our smartphone we place it onto the wireless charger here. Uh, so we get that in the box, we obviously get the, uh, the headset here, we get this nifty remote control that we can use for uh, controlling the device. We also get a couple of other cool things here, a lanyard that we can uh, put around our neck and hang the phone from if we don't want it to be in a pocket or if we don't have any pockets And we also have a head strap um, Which I don't actually have here, but we do get a head strap that we can use uh, to help keep the uh, the glasses in place And we get a lanyard for the glasses as well So we can hang them around our neck if we take them off and we're not using them And of course we also get this very nice user guide so that's what we get in the box with our device, uh, but what is the Inspire all about? Well, basically, Iris Vision have taken the software from the Iris Vision Live device and put it inside this new headset. Now, this headset has been designed from the ground up by Iris Vision, whereas their Iris Vision Live device uh, is using a virtual reality headset and phone from Samsung. So this one's a bit more special because it has a bespoke design. And as I said, it is a lot more like a pair of regular sunglasses than the Iris Vision Live. So if I just pop this on here, um, this looks a lot sleeker than the Iris Vision Live. Um, it's more like sunglasses. Obviously, it's kind of larger than regular sunglasses and it is deeper than regular sunglasses. But it does look, you know, a lot cooler uh, uh, than the Iris Vision Live, I would say at least. And uh, we do have a camera in the front and we do have screens on the inside as you would expect. But the image processing, as I had said before, is done on the phone which is tethered to the glasses. So you do need this phone uh, to be connected to the glasses by a cable in order for the glasses to work. So uh, that may be a downside to some, you are tethered. Um, whereas with the Iris Vision Live, everything is built into the headset. But the upside to that is that they have managed to make the headset itself very lightweight um, because it hasn't got all of the kind of computing innards in there anymore. Um, so really nice light, uh, lightweight headset, which makes it super comfortable to use and also allows them to make it smaller. So I think uh, that's a good trade-off, I would say at least. In terms of controls, we have a number of ways to control the Iris Vision Inspire. We have uh, controls on the bottom. Uh, so there are four buttons which are located underneath the lenses and those can be used to carry out all the different functions of the device. We also have this remote control, so we can use that if we would prefer. Again, this controls all functionality. And we can also use voice commands as well. So we can give voice uh, commands to zoom in, to change modes, uh, adjust brightness and things like that. So definitely there are a number of ways to control. A few more things about the design here that I like. Number one, um, this de device is not designed to be worn over your glasses. And so uh, to enable that, they have these kind of dials underneath that you can adjust. And they will basically change the, uh, the, the dioptric power in here. Um, essentially, if you wear glasses, you can actually correct for your prescription by using the dials that are built into the headset here. And you have about eight diopters or so that you can adjust by. Um, so that's really neat. That means you can take off your glasses and uh, just wear these. And that allows you to get these right up against your face, uh, which will help you kind of get immersed and make sure that the screens are right in front of your eyes. Now, if you do have high levels of astigmatism, like myself, um, you cannot adjust for that with these glasses. And so in that case, you might want to wear these over your own glasses. Even though that's not something that uh, Iris Vision says that you can do, I can put this on over my glasses absolutely fine. Um, so uh, if you're in the same situation as me, I don't think it's a problem at all. 
Another neat thing about the design here is we have this rubber insert and we can either have this in or out. Now while it's in, this means that it's going to be blocking off any external light and so the headset's going to be right up against our face and we're going to be completely immersed in there and the screens will be right there and we'll have a very good image. However, we can't walk while we have the rubber insert in because we can't see anything around the glasses. Now, with the Ibis Vision Inspire, we can go ahead and pop that rubber insert out. And now when we're wearing the glasses, we can actually see around the periphery, so around the edges. And that allows us to be mobile with this device, which is something which you cannot be with the Iris Vision Live device. So uh, we definitely uh, have a good positive there. And if you're not familiar with Iris Vision Live, this is Iris Vision's older headset. Um, if you uh, check out, there should be a notification in the top right um, if you want to click on it to see our video on the Iris Vision Live. Um, and we will be taking a look at that device at the end of this video where we kind of compare the two devices. Um, but uh, yes, with the Iris Vision Inspire, we can potentially walk while wearing it, which is really quite neat. Now, one of the downsides to devices that you can uh, wear while walking um, has traditionally been that the screens have been quite small. And so even though you might be able to walk while wearing the device, in terms of just improving your vision, they tend to uh, traditionally not be as effective as some of those virtual reality style devices. That's not really the case here. The screens in the Iris Vision Inspire are actually nice and large and give you a really good field of view. And so, you know, it is practical uh, to walk with it, but also you're getting a great field and that makes it easier to use and uh, more effective at improving your visual acuity. So I think they really have done a good job on the design here for, for the most part. All right, well, what does Iris Vision Inspire do? What are its functions? Of course, we have magnification. We can zoom in up to 10 times magnification. We can either do that, as I said, with voice commands, with buttons on the headset, or with the remote control. Uh, zooming in and out, out is nice and snappy. We don't get any image lag that I've noticed. However, I will say at the higher levels of magnification, it is noticeable that the image becomes somewhat uh, grainy and pixelated. Um, and I would say that's definitely more so than with the other device, Iris Vision Live. So I don't think the image quality is as good yet with this device. Now, that being said, that might be something that can be improved with software updates. And of course, this being a modern device, um, you can update the device over Wi-Fi and those updates will get pushed out. And I think the idea is that everybody will get those for free. So there definitely could be some software improvements for that image. But at the moment, it's not as good as the Iris Vision Live. Does that mean it's bad? No, not at all. It's perfectly usable, particularly at the lower levels of magnification. But as with any wearable, it's something you would want to try for yourself to see whether it works for you or not. Some of the other modes we have, we have a high contrast black on white reading mode. So if you're reading, you can turn that on. You'll get a nice uh, black text on a white background. We also have a specific television mode, which allows you to adjust basically the, uh, the lighting in the headset to adjust for the ambient lighting in the room in which you're watching television. And so you can make adjustments to make sure that your TV kind of is uh, the correct colors and nice and bright and everything looks good, depending on the room that you're in. So that's nice to see. We have a RP mode, which is for those people with peripheral vision loss. And so uh, what you can do there is shrink down the image so it fits inside that central area of vision. And we also have a YouTube video mode where we can stream videos from YouTube and watch those right inside the headset. And uh, it's kind of like being at a cinema. You've got this nice big screen right in front of you and you're fully immersed in there. Uh, you hear the sound from the video and you're able to kind of skip forwards and backwards uh, using the remote control and pause and play and all of that type of good stuff. So we have a number of good features. And again, moving forward, um, I'm sure more features are going to be added and those will then be available through a software update. Um, Iris Vision Live does have some more features available, so I think we'll probably see those features coming across to the Inspire um, over time here. Now, one of the things the Inspire can do that Iris Vision Live does not is uh, we can also use it as a phone. So obviously, as I said before, we have the phone tethered to the headset. And this is a fully operational Android smartphone. And with the price of the device, uh, we actually get uh, messaging and calls and data included on the phone. And we can use it as a regular cell phone. 
And some of that stuff is integrated into the headset. So for example, if you get a call while wearing the headset, you will see on the headset's display who's calling and um, you know, you'll then be able to go ahead and answer the phone. You can't answer in the headset from what I understand at the moment, but that might happen down the line. And I know that Iris Vision are looking at ways to further integrate the smartphone with the headset here. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that progresses. Um, but even without the headset, this is a fully operational Android phone that you'll be able to use as a regular smartphone. And like I say, for two years, it includes calls, messaging, and data. So without even paying anything extra, you're gonna get all that stuff included. Uh, really cool idea, and nobody else is, is doing it at the moment, so, uh, so why not? And I believe this uh, phone here is a Galaxy S21, I think. So uh, certainly seems like a, a decent smartphone to me. Some of the other things we can do with our headset, we can access uh, various settings. So for each mode, we can go in and change various things. For example, brightness, uh, contrast. We can um, also turn on a flashlight on the front of the headset. And so in those dark conditions, we can turn on a light and then we will be able to you know, see better. Uh, so that's a neat idea. We can also turn off the screens individually of each other. With the Iris Vision Live, it's just one big screen, so you can't do that. With this device, two separate screens, so you can turn those off individually from each other if you need to, which is uh, really nice to see. I think that's a great, uh, great little feature. We can also uh, adjust the interpupillary distance and various other things as well. So there's a number of settings that you can get into if you want to get into some of the more uh, advanced stuff and uh, get it set up exactly for how you want to use it. And of course, if you're working with an agency, then they can help you get it set up and everything as well. So great device. Uh, like I say, a uh, little bit of improvement I think could be done with the live magnification mode, but I am confident that uh, that will happen. And maybe not as many features as the Iris Vision Live at the moment, but I think they will uh, be coming down the pipeline for sure. Uh, but the main thing is, you know, we're starting to get devices that look more like regular sunglasses and, um, you know, they're more lightweight, more comfortable to wear, less, um, hmm, what's the word here? Um, they're a bit more discreet, you know, um, so I think this is a great move. This is the way the technology should be moving and I'm very excited that Iris Vision have come out with this device. I think it's definitely worth checking out. Price-wise, we're looking at 3995 as of the recording, which is December 2021. Um, so it's $1,000 more expensive than the Iris Vision Live. Considering that this device has been designed from the ground up by Iris Vision, um, I can understand why the price uh, has increased there. So that makes sense to me. And as always with these things, if you want to check it out, uh, if you think it sounds like something that would be interesting, then you should definitely try and get a demo if you're in our area, or even if you're not, we're in Milwaukee here, you can come here. Uh, so get in touch if you would like to, 414-615-0103 email infocus at vision-forward.org and you can visit our website vision-forward.org. If you want to stick around for just a few more minutes, we're going to take a look at the Iris Vision Live and just kind of look at these devices side by side and talk about some of the similarities and some of the differences. So the Iris Vision Live is the VR style uh, wearable that Iris Vision are known for at the moment. And this is an older device now, has a number of cool features. But one thing we're going to notice straight away, if I go ahead and put this on, is it is substantially larger and uh, chunkier than the new Iris Vision Inspire. Um, now the nice thing about this type of wearable traditionally has been that um, it really immerses you in there and you get a nice wide field of view. And so it's been a very successful uh, kind of style, a very successful design of wearable. But now the Inspire has really got all of the plus sides of that style, but in this much more kind of uh, user-friendly and wearable design. So I think they've really hit a home run with the, with the design of the Inspire here. I'll just put this on actually quickly again, just as a comparison, so we can see that this is significantly uh, smaller and it's, uh, it is lighter to wear and all of that type of good stuff. In terms of features, I had already discussed this. Uh, Iris Vision Live does have additional features that the Inspire does not. So Iris Vision, in Live, uh, Iris Vision Live has the capability to take photos and store them. It has optical character recognition, so it can read printed text aloud to you. It also has some other alternate color modes, high contrast white on black, and a green and a yellow, I believe, uh, color mode. 
Um, it has some other things like a reading line mode and a bioptic mode. So basically it has more uh, modes that you can choose from, which you may find beneficial. I would say though, most people are just using the live magnification mode for the most part, and obviously both devices have that. But another thing with the Iris Vision Live is it will zoom into 14 times magnification, and the image is better quality in my opinion. Um, so that is a big plus for the Iris Vision Live. Uh, but the Iris Vision Inspire is certainly no slouch in that area, and so it is one of those things where you would want to try all the devices side by side to see which one works the best for you. Now you cannot walk with the Iris Vision Live on because it does fully fit against your face. There's no space at the sides or underneath or anything like that. Um, so it's not safe to walk with, while as with the Inspire, we can walk with this one if we take out the rubber insert when we put this device on. We do have the room around the bottom and the sides here that will allow us to see where we're walking. And obviously we have the screens in front of us as well so that uh, we can magnify things if we want to. Uh, so that's definitely a big benefit there for the Iris Vision Inspire. And in terms of operation, I do prefer the Inspire because we have these different ways of operating it. We have the remote control, we have the buttons on the headset, and we also have voice commands. Now, Iris Vision Live has voice commands and it has controls on the right side of the headset here. Um, but the thing with that is if you don't have the use of the right side of your body, Iris Vision Live is not going to be very easy to use, whereas with the Inspire, it's going to be easier because we have the remote control and you can use that with either hand. Also, it is just more convenient to have the remote control to operate the device in general, I would say. So um, I think both devices are pretty easy to use, but I think the Iris Vision Inspire probably uh, wins the day. Uh, for battery life, we're looking pretty similar, about two and a half hours of continuous use before recharging. For recharge time, pretty similar, about three hours uh, to a full charge. And I do think the Inspire is slightly easier to charge. It has this super easy uh, dock here that we can just place the phone into and we can feel that it's properly on there as well. So that makes it nice and easy to charge. With the Iris Vision Live, we have to rest it on a circular charging pad. Sometimes it's difficult to know whether you've got it on there properly or not. And so you might go to use it in the morning and find that there's no charge um, because it hasn't been on the charger properly. So I think the, uh, the Inspire wins there. Now, Iris Vision Live is uh, hands-free. So everything's built into the headset here. And that means there's no cables or anything like that running down from it. With the Inspire, we do have that cable that's running to the smartphone, and so we are tethered. Uh, not really a big deal as far as I'm concerned, but uh, obviously your mileage may vary with that one. Um, you can put the phone in your pocket or hang it around your neck, so it's not uh, really too much of an issue, I don't think. But uh, different people have different preferences, so it's something certainly to be aware of. Iris Vision Live, $2,995. Iris Vision Inspire, $3,995 as of December 2021. So there's a significant price difference between the two. I think Inspire is probably more um, the future of wearables. This is where I see them going. Um, so I like it because of that. And I think there's a lot of potential here. But also it's quite a new product and with new products, you know, there's always things like uh, they're not fully featured when they first come out and maybe there's, you know, uh, issues with the hardware. I haven't noticed any yet, but you never know what's going to happen, right? So I guess buying something that just just come out can always be a bit of a risk. Uh, but I do think that Inspire really does reflect the future of wearables. And if you're interested in wearable technology, it's definitely something which is worth checking out. So in general, Iris Vision products. I think they're both great. I don't think you can go wrong, but make sure you get a demo. Make sure that it's right for you before purchasing anything. And that's all I've got to tell you for today. So I hope this video was useful and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.